This section on DMET console software covers adding and managing data. Let's begin working with DMET console by importing some data. All Affymetrics files that come from the GCS3000 scanner include cell files, so intensity files, and the associated sample file, also called an array set file. So here we have a folder with data that I want to work with. You'll notice that the set of ARR files is larger than the set of cell files, and I've done this to highlight some problems that we're going to run into later. Specifically, DMA console requires that for every cell file that you want to genotype, you need a corresponding ARR file. And you can see in this example that the test01 sample or test01 cell file does not have a corresponding ARR file. Also, uh, we have a number of sample files, 37 to 42, for which there is no corresponding cell file. This case might mimic the data still being scanned uh, on the scanner, and you're trying to process it before all the data has been completely acquired. So let's just get this data into DMIC console. We're going to create a workspace, which is basically a file that is used to store the collection of files that you want to work with. We're going to save our workspace in the same folder as the project where we're storing our data. Project 1. If we have to manage multiple workspaces, it might be helpful to describe what content it has. Uh, let's say samples from AU set. Now that a workspace has been created, the workspace can manage multiple groups of data sets. Um, so we're going to create our first group of data sets, call it set one. Now the software asks us what data we want to add. Let me just add one file type to start with the sample files by unchecking the other ones. We have two ways of selecting files. You can go to a file selector where you can select individually which files are loaded in, or you can go to the folder selection where you uh, are given the option to suck in all the data that belongs in that folder. Let's just start with the file selector. Since I've only selected the file type ARR, these are the only ones that are shown. I want to import all of them, so I'll select them all. I can do this with a drag or a control A. Notice that uh, the files that are selected all are f fall in this uh, file name field. There is a limitation on the number of files that can be imported with this method, and it's basically restricted to how long this single f string can get a more reliable way of importing the data, especially with lots of files, is to use the folder select as well. And that will put in, bring in everything. Let's just do it this way. So what do we have? Well, let's look at the left pane. So what we have here in DMET console, the left pane represents the information that's managed by your workspace, whose name is Project 1. It has different types of information. It has a data sets section where you can store different data sets. And it has a marker list section where it stores information about sets of markers or SNPs. In the data set section, we have created set one, and it stores three different types of information, uh, possibly four. Sample attributes, which are the ARR files. Intensity files, that would be the cell files. Gene type results files. This is what eventually are also known as chip files. You don't see pointers to, to individual files here. Instead, the way that you interact with individual files within these groups is by selecting a group and saying something like show sample attributes table. And that will open this table, which was actually already open. There are 41 rows in this table that correspond to 41 sample files, 30, 13 columns to this table, and none of the rows are selected. 
The way that you can work with individual files is by selection of the individual rows. So for example, if I don't want the sample file in this data set, I select the row, right click, and say remove selected row from data set. And that will remove the corresponding sample file from this workspace. It does not delete the actual file, it just removes this workspace's knowledge about that file. We're not going to remove it at this point. If we say what cell files is available, let's open this up. We haven't opened any intensity data results, or we haven't added any of those to the workspace yet, so the results are not available. Let's add those now. Uh, the commands that I'm going to be working with, we can access a number of different ways. One way of doing it is selecting um, a particular node in this left pane and s uh, seeing what the relevant commands are for that node. So add data, for example, for adding data to the data set. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is using these shortcuts um, in the toolbar at the top, create data set had data set. You could click it that way. Uh, the software may ask you what data set to add it to if you have multiple data sets and you do it from the toolbar. Uh, or you can go just to, to the file menu and it will also collate those. So there's a number of ways to do the same commands. I will frequently do things by right clicks on the relevant sections. So now I'm going to add additional data to data set 1. This time I'm going to add the cell files. And a new table opens up, um, which lists all the cell files that are available. Show intensity table is the same as this file that opens. So it has information um, not only about the cell file, as in when was it created, what's its name, but this table is collating information from other file types as well. In this case, it's pull also pulling information from the associated ARR file. Let's just look at the information that's only in the ARR file by switching to its tab. In the ARR file, you have not only the name of the file, but also the information that's stored within the ARR file. For example, what individual was genotyped? What's their gender? Where was this, did the sample come from? Is it a control sample or just a regular sample? Um, this is one of the two required fields, which explains why the ARR file is needed. Um, the other required field is the consented marker list. The consented marker list is what is the set of markers that are allowed to be genotyped for this sample. The actual set of markers that's in DMET plus all shows up in this marker list, DMET plus all, which I'll show later. Going back to the sample attributes tab, it doesn't just have information about what the contents of the file, but also tells you information about, um, let me just reload this. Let me refresh this information that the cell files have been added. It also tells you whether the associated cell file has been added to this workspace. So this is one way of detecting missing information. So for example, um, number of cell files per sample, as we scroll down, the last six sample files, the last six selected rows, have no associated cell files in this workspace. So these last ARRs, 37 to 42, don't have that. So that's, again, going back to my comment, 37 to 42 don't have associated cell files. To detect this other problem, a cell file that has no associated ARR file, you can go to the cell file tab. The information here is sample type and consented marker list, which are two of the fields that are available um, from the sample file, show no information for this first cell file. 
that's a good clue that the AR file hasn't been loaded with this. And you'll see the consequences of this later. But the first step whenever you're importing data is always make sure that you have all the cell files that you expected to have, you have all the um, sample files that you expected to have, and that there's a one-to-one -one match. So for every AR file, you have one cell file. You want to make sure your data set is complete before you do additional processing on it. I'm uh, playing around in this table. I just want to point out some other things you can do with this table. You can uh, basically copy this information to another source by either copying it directly to the clipboard. You can save the entire table to a file. You can search for information. Or you can do sorting. So if I wanted to find quickly the samples that were missing cell files, I could sort in ascending order on the column that I selected, and that will highlight those quickly. And I can reset the sort. There's also the ability to select which columns are displayed. I'm only showing some of the information from the sample files in this table. but it is possible to show more. So for example, if I switch from default view to all columns view, you see a lot more information uh, for the cell files. And if possible, you can edit these views, create your own custom views. OK, so we've got. Um, data files being managed and, and, and uh, operations that you can do by interacting with the tables that are visualizations of the contents of the sample file section, the intensity section, uh, the gene type section. Let me close these windows quickly. There's two ways we can do it. We can either click this X up here for closing the window or to close multiple ones quickly. Just use window, close all windows. The marker list section shows what set of markers the software knows about. For example, if I double click on DMAP plus all, which is the same as right clicking and selecting the first option, show marker list, I can get the d default information from each marker where the markers are identified by probe set IDs. There are five copy number regions are used to detect uh, entire gene deletions. And the rest of them that start with AM underscore are regular SNP or Indel markers for a total of 1936 on the panel. You can create subsets of these marker lists, and two of them are listed as defaults. There are ways to put in other subsets. We'll work with those later. Workspace manages the paths to the files, not the files themselves. And this can become an issue if you create a very large number of data sets within one workspace, particularly if the data sets belong to data from, from different file locations, different folders. To show you some of, about this, we can do Workspace Show Information general information about this workspace file, where it's saved, some description that you may have entered, and as well for each data set, how many files are in that data set. If you want to see the paths to those files, you can see where the software expects them to be. Sample attribute files, intensity files. The more files that are managed by the software, the more likely it is that when files get moved, you're going to have a problem. Therefore, we have some recommendations. The basic recommendation is that for each project or logical set of data, you create a new workspace file and save the workspace file in the project folder along with the data so that when the folder gets moved, the workspace file moves with it. It'll make it easier to update the paths should you want to use that workspace file again.